We turn now to Colossians in chapter 2 and verse 9. We were considering in our last study that in Christ the entire fullness of God dwells in bodily form. It dwelt in bodily form when he was on earth and now Jesus in his risen body has that same bodily form up in heaven. The entire fullness of God dwells in him and he is the head over all rule and authority, verse 10, and head particularly to his body today, which is the church, the spiritual body, and in which body also the same fullness of God desires to dwell. We need to see this. Our calling is that the fullness of God, which dwelt in Christ when he walked on earth, can now be seen in our earthly body. In him we have been made full. And in him, verse 11, this is the way by which that fullness becomes our portion. Verse 12, in him we were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. It speaks about the way of the cross being the means by which this fullness becomes our portion. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands in the removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In the Old Testament, circumcision was the mark of the people of God. That physical cutting off of the flesh. But like everything else in the Old Testament, it was only a picture and a symbol of what was going to be fulfilled in the New Testament. And here we are told what that circumcision is. In Philippians 3.3 3, we are told the true circumcision are those who have no confidence in the flesh. Circumcision is not just an external rite. It was an external rite that was to have an inward meaning and reality. And this is where the Jews missed completely the meaning and purpose of circumcision. Just like they misunderstood the Sabbath, they misunderstood circumcision too. And in Colossians 2, he speaks about circumcision. In verse 11, he speaks about the Sabbath and the other Old Testament rituals. In verse 16, he says, they were all a shadow, Colossians 2:17. The circumcision too was a shadow. The reality is found in verse 11 of Colossians 2, the removal of the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And therefore he calls it a circumcision made without hands. Verse 11. The Old Testament circumcision was a circumcision made with hands. A physical act, a bodily operation. Man's handiwork. But this circumcision is a spiritual work done by the Holy Spirit. It's called the circumcision of Christ. And in this circumcision of Christ, we have been set free from the sins of the flesh, from our sinful nature, set free from the bondage and slavery to this body which led us into all types of lusts. What is this circumcision of Christ that is spoken of here? It's explained more fully in Romans chapter 6. And verse 6, where we are told that we, our old man, was crucified with Christ. That the body of sin, which is the same thing spoken of in Colossians 2.11, the body of flesh, may be done away with. That is, made powerless, so that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So we can say that on the cross, when Jesus died, our old man was crucified with him. That is the circumcision that took place. A complete cutting off of confidence in the flesh. A complete cutting off of the desire to sin. That has been accomplished if I take my place as crucified with Christ. Jesus Christ not only died to save us from the guilt of sin, he also died that we might be saved from the power of sin. And that is through our accepting not only that our sins were placed on him, 
but that our old man was crucified with Christ. The old man is that mind that desired to sin. That is the flesh that needs to be cut off in circumcision. That's the symbolism of the flesh that was cut off in the Jews when they were circumcised. That hard foreskin was cut off so that we might have a soft heart. And that is what Paul is speaking of here in Colossians 2.11. The operation of the cross which removes, which makes powerless the body of sin, which removes that old man so that I am set free from this old man or sinful nature which made me sin again and again and again. I still have a flesh which tempts me, but the old man is put off. And this is testified to, as we saw in Romans 6, through baptism. And this is what he says in Colossians 2 verse 12 as well. Having been buried with him in baptism, this circumcision that took place inwardly in my heart, where my heart no longer wants to sin, where the old man is crucified and cut off, circumcised, whatever word we use, is now testified to in water baptism. By immersion, I, united with Christ in his death, am also raised up with Christ through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Central to the teaching of Paul on sanctification in the life of the believer was union with Christ in his death and resurrection. Paul spoke again and again and again of a union with Christ in death which cut off our old connections, symbolized in circumcision, and a raising up with him, a rising up with him, a resurrection with him, God raising us up. All this is possible through our faith. We know that the New Testament teaches that everything that God does can be ours only if we appropriate it by faith. Forgiveness of sins. God has done all that is necessary for that in the death of Christ on the cross. But it can be ours only if we receive it by faith. The reason why many people's sins are not forgiven today is because they haven't received by faith. We can say the same thing in relation to the believer. That many believers are still living a defeated life because they haven't received by faith the fact that they, their old man was crucified with Christ. And so it speaks in verse 12, the last part, of through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Do I believe that God can do the same thing in me? Verse 13 speaks of our past life and what Christ has done when you were dead in your transgressions and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. That was our condition when we were unconverted. We were spiritually dead in our sin. And we were uncircumcised in the sense that our heart was hard. We loved to sin. That's the meaning of being uncircumcised. Our hearts were hard and we loved to sin. And now God has done something. He circumcised us. He's cut off this hard that was over our heart and given us a soft heart now in circumcision inwardly he has made us alive together with Christ and forgiven us all our sins there are two things he did he forgave us all our sins and he made us alive together with Christ and he has cancelled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us and which was hostile to us. He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The law of God stood against us with all its decrees which we had disobeyed and broken, and therefore the law of God was our enemy. It had to be because we had violated his law. But now that certificate of debt which was written up against us, it says here, God has now cancelled it. We need to see this. The bill has been paid. That certificate of debt with our name on it has been cancelled because he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Here Paul uses figurative language of a certificate being nailed 
with Christ on the cross. That means what I owe has been paid for completely through Jesus' death. I am no longer in debt. All the obligations I had to the law, the price I had to pay because I had broken the law, has been set aside completely. Now we need to see this very clearly, that I have no debt. If I were to approach a person to whom I owe a terrific debt, I'll always be ashamed and afraid to come before him. And that's how many people feel when they try to come before God. That's because they haven't seen that everything they owe to God has been taken out of the way by Jesus on the cross. It's a wonderful thing. You need to meditate there on verse 14 of the entire debt that we owe to God being taken out of the way. That certificate has been cancelled completely and so we come to God without any fear because the debt is cancelled and God now declares us righteous owing him nothing.